Hi, Virgo. So, what? I totally forgot to do your reading last week. I was going through last week's readings trying to figure out who was up next. And I was like, wait, I don't see Virgo on here. So, Virgo, my sincerest apologies for overlooking you last week. Uh, this is your current timeless, intuitive energy reading for the week ahead. And my beautiful Virgs, as an apology for overlooking you, I value you. I hope you know that. Um, I will do, this is the night of Virgo, so I will do this reading as a general, and then I will post another reading for you. And because it's the same week, I'll go different topic, and everybody loves a good romance read. So Virgo, I will gift you with a romance read as an apology for forgetting you last week. So... Please, please accept my apologies. So with that said, you have arrived on the channel on the Journey 111, formerly known as Rockaritaville. I did change the channel back to what it was originally called before it was Rockaritaville, so um, that's what's going on with that. And then as always, Virgs, we're doing your um, general readings, so this if it doesn't fit you, you might check out your moon, rising, or other placements on the channel or maybe even just the titles, because we can all be in a given energy at any given time. So if it resonates, even if it's not your sign, it might be worth checking out. And then also I do wanna thank my new returning and returning subscribers and all of you popping into the channel to check it out. Thank you for being here. Your likes, shares, subscribes, comments, all of that helps the channel grow, so thank you. All right, with all of that said, we are gonna start with the mixed animal herbiary. So it's an, it's an animal and plant energy deck that's mixed, it's two decks. It's called the Illustrated Herbiary and the Illustrated Bestiary. We will clarify with Patch Tarot, and then we will close out the reading with some charms of Virgo. So that'll be fun. Let me get that chopstick out of the camera lens view. So tell me about the week ahead for Virgo. Most influential energies, please, for Virgo. Virgo, week ahead, please. Virgo's most influential energy in the week ahead, please. Okay, so we had two pop out. Let's see what we have. Oh, you know, this came out, both of these came out in pre-shuffle. So we have um, Trillium, Spirit into Matter. So something that you've been working on is manifesting in the week ahead for you. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have Release Rigidity, uh, Valerian. Now this is here to, um, so whatever's coming in for you, whatever you're manifesting, the Trillium energy, that Spirit into Matter, you're going to need to, um, well, you don't need to do anything. You're being invited, Virgo, to release rigid energy around that, rigid thought forms, um, structures that don't serve your highest good. Maybe you just believe them because you've always believed them. And so they guide your decision making, and yet they may not be the structures that are going to serve you um, in your best for whatever this manifestation is. So um, I wonder if the emperor is gonna come out. Interesting. Let's find out more about the energy in the week ahead for my beautiful Virgos. Virgo, you're my rising sign. So I wonder a big portion of who I am. Create space, yep. So with manifestations coming in, raspberry energy is here. And that's part of releasing rigidity too. So you are not just creating space physically, say by you know clearing out old clothes from your closet or cleaning out drawers, but the space that you're creating in the week ahead, Virgo, is about the rigid nature that you've been holding on to that's been preventing this manifestation or this dream or this, this thing that you're trying to create in your life, new job, new romance, uh, new business, new friendship, um, you know, a new hobby of some sort, whatever that is, 
um, this is taking up space, this rigid nature that is, um, it needs to be released. So only you're going to know what that is for you and for each one of you that will be different. But you can feel rigid nature in your body because you feel a tightness in your body. So if you know what it is that's currently manifesting, if you know what I'm talking about, this thing that you've been working on, that you're attached to, it is the jewel of your heart. It's you put, you think about it all the time, right? It's a heart's desire. So whatever this is, um, it's being blocked by this rigid energy. So if you think that it has to come to you in a certain way and you're not allowing it in because it's not arriving in that way, that's the energy that you want to look for to create space around that. And all you really need to do is just, um, I know it's hard to do, Virgo, and what you're being invited to do is to question why you believe what you believe around something to create the space for it. You're not being asked to make yourself wrong. You're not being asked to make anybody else wrong. You're simply being asked to be open to a new way of perceiving and looking at things to put space in between you and this rigid nature that's preventing this from coming in. So that is, uh, that's beautiful and interesting and exciting. At the bottom of the deck, we have uh, self-healing, so ripple outward. Um, as you release whatever this, this structure is, the Valerian, what Valerian's here to heal, um, that rigid nature, as you release that and you begin to accept new ways of thinking and new ways of being into your, into your field of potential, that creates positive vibrational frequencies around you, meaning the energy that you begin to emit throughout all your environments. So when you find great happiness in this manifestation that's coming in, that creates a ripple effect in all of your environments, Virgo. So this positive energy is really, it's rippling throughout your life is what I hear and the life of others. And um, I am curious to know more about what it is that you're gonna be releasing and what it is you're creating. So we're going to dig into Patch Tarot and get a little clarification here for you, Virgo. Tell me more about Trillium. What is Virgo manifesting in the week ahead? Hmm, interesting, the light. Okay, so the light is a holy card. It is, um, and something is being revealed for you. So whatever this is, they're not really telling me what it is, only that it's being revealed. So um, whatever it is, it's coming to you. It might be a bit of a surprise, Virgo. Um, Tell me more, it's coming, so the light is, so what I'm getting is that like a dawning light and a realization, it's a revealing about what this is that's um, holding you back, this sternness that you're holding around something, a belief system. And it's coming in as an illuminated force, right? It's being revealed to you um, as a as perhaps a stalled out aha moment, like, oh my God, why? Like, duh, like, of course I know this. And so, whatever it is, there's there's a big reveal. And so, um, yeah. And you might know what this is. You might not. Um, it is in your field of potential in the week ahead for you. Tell me more about Trillium and the light. So again, the light is a holy card. It's above the major arcana in the Patch Tarot deck. Um, it's things at an esoteric level. 
Tell me more about Trillium, please, for Virgo in the week ahead. Let's give these another shuffle. They're being quiet now. They were super jumpy when I was doing the pre-shuffle. Um, I had to go and collect cards that had flown out. So um, let's see why they're quiet now. Tell me more about Virgo in the week ahead. Trillium, please. It's being manifested for Virgo. There we go. The Eight of Wands, a shift. Now, the card did come out sideways, so I'm going to read it sideways. Sometimes it means a wobble form. Um, it interprets itself as a wobble. In general, it simply means that both energies are present, the energy of the reverse of the card and the upright of the card. So with the Eight of Wands, that is movement, that is shift. In the reversed position, you have inertia. So that's kind of a fatigue or a delay or maybe... So the inertia um, I w I'm getting is in the sideways position has to do with the rigid nature. So it's preventing... Um, the, so it's like it went from in reverse and the card is shifting doot, 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 and it's going into the upright position. So as you change your position and you release this rigid nature and you clear this space out for whatever that is, practical level, drawers, closets, you know, things that are taking up space and clogging up the energy in your life. And um, it's just, this is just telling you it's coming in, right? The shift is here. With the eight of wands um, in the traditional tarot, it's eight wands flying through the air. Um, this speaks a little bit more to your nature, right? The shift in your nature. It's like a miniature will of fortune a little bit. So whatever this is, it may not be a huge cycle, but it is an important manifestation for you in your life. You've been working for it. And it brings a great deal of joy. So um, what you're being guided to in the week ahead, Virgo, is to make yourself available for this energy in the upright position and shift out of that in the reverse and, um, you know, tap into Valerian here, um, that energy that helps you to release, right? Um, Valerian is about just attracting. So Valerian in the book talks about how it gives off a special scent or a special fragrance only for cats and it loves cats because cats are kind of shameless right they'll take a nap in the middle of the day if you want their attention they don't really care they'll just saunter off in that cat way that they do and valerian loves that right it loves that sense of independence it loves that sense of self-care so if you aren't caring for yourself and you are working, you know, 17 hours a day, going on four hours of sleep and trying to function, perhaps you're being asked to release a rigid time schedule because something is coming in here for you and this is potentially a block. So let's find out more about Valerian. Ooh. Oh, ha. interesting. Okay. So we have the um, Lovers in Reverse Virgo, which is an indicator in this particular deck of divorce or a separation or a ending of some sort. So if you're coming out of an ending or you're trying to prevent an ending, perhaps, um, this rigid nature of yours is um, or of somebody else's is um, part of what's what's disrupting, right? This is not being in alignment. And this card talks about how it brings the energy of the cards, the five cards in front of it. Um, the Let's look at it in the upright position. The Empress, the Emperor, um, the Priestess, the Hierophant, and the Magician. And it brings all of those energies together. Maybe this is the magician down here. But it brings all of those energies together in the upright position in a state of union. So when you're thinking of this card um, in a less practical way, in a more esoteric way, you've divorced or left some aspect of yourself behind. 
um, that has gotten in the way of this manifestation. Perhaps you are trying to manifest a marriage or a relationship or love, Virgo. And because of this rigid nature, it's actually stood in the way of people's ability to get close to you. It's the divorce of yourself, your lower self, from your higher self in, re in reverse. So this card, to put it back into the upright position and get out of that divorce, um, if you want to get out of that divorce, if this is related to self versus an actual person, um, then and you want to get out of separation from yourself and go back into that marriage state or that honeymoon state of yourself, that means, Virgo, loving yourself the way that you're willing to love other people. Okay, so just think about that. Think about, you know, a former partner or a curtain partner and all the things that you would do for them at any given moment, no matter what. And now ask yourself, do I love myself that much? And if you don't and you're being rigid about how you are in union with your own higher self, then this is that call to bring this card into the upright position and release that rigid nature standing in your way between the union of you, yourself, your spiritual self, and or a partner. Because Virgo, we must be in union with ourselves first before we can ever be in truly deeply healthy unions with other people. Because we begin to look outside of ourselves for those those ha those happiness things, right? And those happiness things already live inside of us. And you bring that forward. And by you bringing that forward, Virgo, it brings it into the relationship and nurtures the relationship. I think it might have been destiny that maybe we do a love reading. So this, I'm kind of looking forward to it because love readings aren't my jam. So we'll see uh, what comes out. But... Um, your second card for release rigidity is the 10 of cups. This is, it came out in the sideways position. So it's indicating to me a wobble or that both energies are present in the week ahead in the reversed position. It's deprivation. It's a lack of emotional well being. It's, it's a lack of unity, right? Um, because we had this in the, re the lovers in the reverse position where it's the divorce from yourself. It's the divorce from your higher self and those parts of yourself. And again, this could very well be a separation in a relationship or one being considered because the 10 of cups is in the sideways position. So maybe choices haven't been made yet. And Virgo, if this is something that you want to fight for, then it's absolutely here for you to do that. Um, and you don't even have to fight for it. You have to fight for yourself and then it shows up, right? Because this is prosperity. This is taking responsibility and holding yourself capable, Virgo, of bringing those things into the relationship that you want that make it a nurturing environment with this, um, with this 10 of cups rather than an environment that's, that's one devoid of love and caring and nurturing, right? So um, be mindful that this energy is here. It is sideways. I'm going to put it in the upright position because I trust Virgo that now that you're aware of the energy that's present, you're also aware that you have free will. And there is nothing more powerful, my beautiful Virgos, than your own ability to choose, even when you don't like your choices. So um, you can choose not to make a choice because that's a choice, right? So um, whatever this is, you're each going to have a different situation. Some of the situations maybe do need to come to an end. And maybe some of the situations are just ruptured and there's room for repair, which is what I'm really getting out of this that this is something that can be repaired, whatever it is. If it's an intimate relationship, um, you repair it by focusing on yourself, not the other person, Virgo, or not the job or the interview or whatever it is that you're going after that you're so focused on. It's turning that focus internally because the other will come. So, 
Um, the five of swords in terms of creating space, um, get rid of the conflict in your life, wherever that's at, or no, nope, it's get rid of the conflict. Um, because you're so fo like, see how focused this patch is and the conflict that's occurred here. And he's won the battle, but the war's coming in behind him. There's a tsunami coming in. There's a storm coming in and patch is so focused on this he's not seeing this so whatever this conflict is if you can clear that out if you you can choose not to even participate in it um if you feel like you need to then you know do what you need to do because um sometimes conflicts do create space right they do um allow endings and hopefully they don't have to be that way but you know it's typically you know, things typically end because they're not good. Um, and so, you know, that's just kind of how it, how it goes. But whatever this is, um, let go of it. Because that tsunami and that storm is, um, it's there. And you're going to miss something else that's potentially incoming. The tower has been coming out a lot this week for a lot of people, um, Virgo. And it did come out in your pre-shuffle. And um, it's not come out yet thus far. So, um but I feel compelled to mention it that just because it's not on the table doesn't mean it's in, not in your energy field. And if you are in conflict and you're um, being rigid about whatever this, this, this relationship is, um, this could be a job, this could be a boss, this could be a friendship. Only you know what the nature of that is. But, um, you know, just I really feel compelled to tell you that there's other energy here in that lives in the week and you need to create emotional space, um, perhaps financial space. Maybe you're going to maybe you're going to blow a tire and you're going to have to buy a new tire this week. Right. You need the space from this conflict. This needs to be cleared out to be able to turn around and look at this, okay? One more please for Raspberry and Five of Swords. Actually clarify Five of Swords, please. Yep, oh yeah, so yep, came out. Tower. Um, now when it came out pre-shuffle, it came out in reverse. Um, it beautiful because the star also came out um, in your pre-shuffle, which is hope. So let's do these in the order that they occur in the deck. The tower upright is a revelation. It's a deeper understanding. It's insights coming in. A tower is this revealing. The tower is, you know, your spirit into matter, this thing that wants to come in for you and add beautiful to your life. Um, that wants to shift all of that, right? It's here. And the star is immediately behind it, which is faith that it's the right path. So whatever it is that's being cleared out for you, you have a revelation around it. You're releasing your rigid nature or your boundaries or your belief systems that are keeping it away from you. And you are leaning into the faith of the star. You know that something greater is there. So um, that's really beautiful because, you know, these, you know, tarot doesn't always, you know, portend a disaster. In fact, it hardly ever does. You know, we can pull towers. I pull towers fairly regularly. And one of them was my cat disappeared for 24 hours. And what, you know, like... It can be really standard things that are just everyday life things um, that knock us off balance, right? And by holding the faith that my cat would come back, he did, right? And, you know, so just realize that um, that you do have this, this tsunami or this storm. Um, it may not be a tsunami. It could just be a rogue wave, right, um, coming in and and the faith of your new beginning, your Ten of Cups upright, your prosperity, your Eight of Wands, communication, your shift of energy, the revealing of life, um, of life. Wow, that's interesting. I meant to say the revealing of the light card here. 
and your ability to turn the lovers into the upright position by managing your own energy, right? So at the bottom of the deck in terms of ripple outward, that is the queen of swords. It's clear communication. It is being perceptive. It's tapping into your intuition. It's being detail oriented. And these are the things that will also help to generate that ripple outward. Your ability to clearly communicate and articulate and set boundaries will help ease a transition and or you're also cutting things out. Can you see that a little bit? Um, you're also cutting this these rigid things out of your life as well. So very interesting week ahead for you. You've got good things coming in. You've got a shift. You have a little bit of a tower moment. You're visiting your belief systems and the things that are holding you back about them. So, um, yeah, you're, you're doing the work this week, Virgo, and it's paying off for you. You've got 10 of cups, you know, you've got the star, you've got the light. Um, it's beautiful. Just be aware of the conflict energy. Know that it lives in the field of potential and know that you always have a choice on how you respond to it if and when it arrives. So can I get some charms for clarification for Virgo, please, for the week ahead? Virgo. All right. Oh, that's a lot. Shoot. Okay. How much time do we have? All right. We'll just do our best. Okay. So we had the um, heart key show up. <clears throat> we also, over here um, on the lovers, we have a wooden bead that came out and fell on the lovers. So maybe it's about, again, about changing that perspective, um, looking at things through a new lens, getting grounded with the wood. Um, it could also, of course, be very, it could be a sexual uh, connotation as well. We have here the key with the heart. Now the key with the heart is um, that you that you have the key. And is there a lock in here? No. Nope. You've got the key and you know what you want to do with it. Now you need to go put it in the door here with the light to reveal what that is. There used to be an old game show. Oh, I can't remember what it was. But it was like, do you pick behind what's door number one or do you go behind door number two? And... Door number one could be like a pig in a hula skirt and door number two could be $10,000. You've got the key, you've got the revelations coming in and you've got the light to show you the way. So that's beautiful. We have here a bottle cap. This is a session and we have paper. So, um, you know, maybe you're going to have a session where you sit down with somebody and you write out your goals. You write out what it is that you're agreeing to. Maybe if you're entering into a new relationship or if this is a end of a relationship, I don't it doesn't feel like an ending to me. Um in fact, it doesn't. I mean, it has the essence of relationship, but that's not what I'm getting out of it. But this could be contracts as well. Um it could be something that you agreed to that now you don't want to agree to and you're being held to it. But I feel like whatever this paper is, this paper is has something to do with the tower or the revelation. Maybe you're going to get an email, a text message, um, a letter in the mail, something like that. We have the um, yellow cone, which is your caution cone. So this is here to um, talk about this eight of wands energy that had the wobble that was shifting in and out of um, inertia or fatigue. So going from fatigue or kind of I don't care to that shift of focus and motivation, just be mindful of the energy that you're in because the higher, the higher you can hold your frequency, the better your results. Um, we have here, this is uh, one of those things that you like look at diamonds with. Can I do this to see if it's really a diamond? So you're looking at the value of something in the week ahead. Um, something that 
has been very, very important to you and you're trying to understand its worth in your life with this. So again, this is one of those, it's jewelers use it to examine, um, you know, a stone. So that's going over the lover's card. We have um, what we examined with that. There we go. Is love. Can you focus? Come on, baby. There we go. Love. So this love charm, this is going over prosperity and your Ten of Cups. Um, well, Ten of Cups had a wobble. Um, you know, hashtag love wins. So we've got a second warning cone. Now, this one's going over your Five of Swords. That is telling you about that conflict energy coming in behind you, right? So you're focused down here on this, and this is here to remind you of what lives in the background, right? So be cautious of that, that one that could be a blind spot, right? Because in pre-shuffle, this tower came out in reverse. When it's in reverse, it means that it's, it's ignorance, right? It's a blind spot. You don't know what you don't know. You may not see it coming. You may have ignored it. So um, you've got two caution cones, and um, they're definitely sending you a message to be in a deeper state of awareness, to be mindful of the red flags or the, the other caution cones here that might show up throughout your week. Um, you'll get energetic sig signals. You'll know. So we have Toe Mater here from um, Cars. And Toe Mater is here to kind of, you know, just, gosh, I guess just give goodwill. Why are you here, Toe Mater? Cars land. Maybe you're getting a new car in the week ahead. Um, Toe Mater turned out to be a really solid friendship, you know, in the movie and somebody you could really, really count on. So um, for that energy, um, this is does come through as an energy of support. Toe Mater is a tow truck, right? He's there when you break down and he picks you up and keeps things safe. So this could be the energy of a person in your life. Somebody who's helping you with this conflict, this Five of Swords energy, and these lovers in reverse. We have um, a Franklin D. Roosevelt campaign button. So it says, OK, America. Let me get my glasses because I cannot read the small print. OK, it says, OK, America. Inauguration, March 4th, 1933. So 33 is a master number. Maybe March 4th means something to somebody. Um, and it says, our president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, you bet I'm with you. So this is that support that I was talking about, right? This is, if this is a relationship that's going through a rough patch, you've got support, You've got somebody who's with you, who is, you know, willing to stay, work it out and make things work. So this is going in between those two cards. And I'm really concerned about running out of time. Boomerang. So something coming back to you. Um, you've this if this. OK, so this obviously is more than one person because this is a general reading. But for those love related that are potentially in separation, this boomerang um, is talking about the comeback or the return of this thing um, and the illumination, the shift that will happen. We have um, interesting. OK, so we've got this is a um, broken infinity symbol, um, you know, so this is a focus on yourself. Um, I feel like the lover's card right now is speaking to that aspect of yourself that separated your lower self from your higher self and to get those back into play with each other with this part. It's just a piece of, um, it was a ring and the other pieces in there. Sometimes they come out together. Sometimes they don't when they don't, it's, um, you know, the energy of a focus on self and nurturing your higher self and your, um, your grounded earthly self. We have an arrow with Tokyo on it. So perhaps you have um, family in Tokyo or 
um, Japan or you're Japanese, um, I feel like, I'm not sure where that goes. I'm just going to put that there in the middle. We have serenity. It's finding that peace within. It's knowing that with the energy of the light card here, which is coming in for a revealing, and the faith card also, um, right after your tower, like right, I mean, literally right behind it. As soon as the tower comes in, it's like you harness your faith and you find serenity in that Virgo. So that's really beautiful. That's there for your star card. Um, this goes back to the relationship person. Uh, this to me is potentially tying the knot or to, um, because there's two pieces here and yet, um, you know, they combine and they share so this is the unity of two becoming one and being interdependent. So they aren't entwined and tangled with each other, but rather they lie interdependent of each other. So I'm putting that over your 10 of cups. Uh, this came out yesterday. I don't remember who it came out for. Scorpio or Gemini, maybe. Um, but, you know, just the waters, the emotional waters here, the multifaceted ways to view things, understanding that something that may not look like a jewel actually is. Um, we're putting that over the light. We have the dragon. So your person might be um, born in the year of the dragon in Chinese um, astrology. Uh, the dragon is here to breathe fire on things, right? The dragon can be a force of destruction and it can be a force of renewal. We have the shadow of yang, of yin and yang here. So one piece of that, which again, alludes to balance and um, the shadow aspects of why Valerian is here with releasing rigidity. So something um, that is in your shadow nature can be released in the week ahead. So that's going with Valerian there. Um, you, we have the bar here with the heart in it, holding the bar high on love. And um, I really feel like, you know, a lot of these are clarifying this Valerian side. Uh, we have a girl. So this could be a girlfriend, uh, as in like a female friend friend, not necessarily intimate, but could be that too. A child, perhaps. Um, maybe a child is what's bringing in the tower moment in the week ahead. So whatever this is, is this is the indicator of feminine energy. And then, um, you know, we've got, I need to look up what this is called. For those of you in the medical industry, if you know what this is called, could you throw it in the comments box? Um, to me, in this case, it's a um, it's a Kundalini rising overseen by um, angelic forces here. So for those really looking at something where that's a potential reunion with a loved one, um, know that that's there. There is separation between you with this this sword down the middle and the snakes intertwined around it. And yet there they are meeting. So this takes us back again to this, the lover's card and the snake here. Um, that rising, that kundalini rising um, between you of the, the higher forces of your individual natures and the nature of who you are together. So beautiful reading. You've got some great things coming in. You have some energy that's a little iffy. And now that you know about it, you know that you can make choices around it. But some really beautiful stuff. Stick to your faith in the week ahead, Virgo. Um, you've got Ten of Cups energy. You have Eight of Wands, passionate energy, shifting. Something is being revealed to you with the light. And um, you're letting go of some, some belief systems that don't serve you and creating space for this trillium or this manifestation to come and get you. So beautiful. Have a great week ahead, Virgo, and I will see you in the romance reading. Bye for now.